Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Scribbles with Jonathan. Uh, today, I thought what I would do is hit record while I was inking a panel. Um, I am going to get to you guys' requested um, videos that you guys want me to tackle. <laughs> uh, scheduling that time is a little rough, so I, I still want to put out some content for you guys. And hopefully uh, some of you cats out there, uh, you know, you'll learn something, um, if this is uh, something you're interested in. Um, so as you saw right away, uh, this panel that I'm working on here, this is for a project called The Standard. Uh, you can check out um, thestandardcomic.com for more information about it. Um, it's a project I'm working on uh, right now. Uh, this here is for issue three. And uh, what I like to do here is I've already done the tight line work. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just inking over top of it. And uh, the tight line work, line work was done with a three pixel brush with no pressure, nothing, just dead, that's how you can see these lines. And then what I'm doing here for the inking is a 9 pixel brush that has pressure sensitivity on, and that's it. And I'm just going over the lines that are overlapping. I I've talked a ton about this. We're, um, we're worried about line weights here, we're worried about breaking things up. Right here is really cool, uh, some texture you kind of add. This is an older man, so you get those wrinkles in the side of your cheeks. And, you know, um, it, whenever there's some somewhat dramatic lighting going on, for me, I like to like ramp it up a bit. Right here, underneath his chin, and underneath it, you know, like not his double chin, but you know, as we get older, our, our skin starts to sag there. And you can see what I'm talking about right there. Hopefully, where you get to stack those whites on black. And what I do here is something I, I just clicked in that I probably should be doing. Uh, I went up into Window, New Window, and so the one on the right is zoomed out, and the one on the left is obviously zoomed in. Um, the only reason I clicked in for me to do this was because I'm so zoomed in when I'm working that it, I, I realized when I show you guys, it's hard for you guys to see what's going on. Um, how I normally work is I have two monitors set up. So as you can see on your screen right now, those two set up, that's basically what I have except put them on monitors each. And it makes it so that your eyes, you know, you can stay focused on one area. If I wanted to, I could um, draw on the right window and it'll still pop up on the left. Um, so it's very cool. It adds a lot of diversity into what you're doing there. Um, this is one way of doing shading. Uh, I plan on doing another version, uh, just to show you guys, not of this panel, but of another one. Um, where what I would do is I would just get like a, a gray kind of brush with some pressure sense or some opacity turned on, and just quickly sketch in where the shadows would go. That way I know in my mind where it's supposed to go, instead of just guessing, <clears throat> in a way, for, that it probably looks, I'm just guessing uh, to you guys. Um, but yeah, so just going in here, uh, breaking some things up. Uh, some things that I remember about doing uh, lighting, and, and this is arguable, um, is you don't have to be 100% correct. It's good to have make it consistent so, you, so that the viewer has an idea of what's going on. Um, but this is comics, this is storytelling. You have to, for me anyway, I find that you have to break those walls down a little bit into something that, that looks good. You know, something that um, doesn't necessarily... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> doesn't have to be bounded in real life. You know, um, I, I for me, if something is done to the point where it looks like it's passable and and it can be believable, then I then I've done my job. I don't have to go in there and stress out about oh God, does this wrinkle here? Does it does it curve right to the lighting? Um, I, I used to do that quite a bit, um, and to be honest with you, uh, after a while, some of my I, I started to realize my influences of uh, artists that I used to try to emulate or still look up to and respect. You know, their lighting's all over the place. Their rendering is all over the place. You find out in interviews and things that they just like to do things that look cool. So, you know, it's, it's your call, whatever you like to do. Um, it's your art, <laughs> right? So, just do it uh, feels good. So here we go, we're just going in there, adding some rendering, breaking up that, uh, the white on, stacking the white on black there. And, um... I think I actually got up to use the washroom at this point. <laughs> so I'm just looking at the magic wand just sitting there. Oh, some of you guys might have asked, uh, <clears throat> why do I use the, the magic wand or how do I fill in things so fast? Um, when you click your wand tool at the top, on the very right, I believe there's a box that says select multiple layers. Um, if you turn that on and you have a clean line art like this, all you would do is you'd select it and it'll fill in. <clears throat> A selection inside that white area, and then I'd go select, modify, expand by about two or three pixels. That way, it doesn't give a white border around anything, and then I just fill it. I have all of that done as a as a hot key. It's actually, I believe, it's um an F key. I'm looking. I think I have it as F4, something like that. 
Um, if you want to know for, more about that, there, there's tons of ways to check out um, action scripts and stuff online. I, I again recommend that DC Comics guide, though. Um, what you're seeing here is pretty much what Freddy talks about uh, his workflow. Um, I haven't deviated too far from it. <clears throat> and uh, here we're just working on the hand. This area kind of gave me a little bit of a little bit of trouble. And, and um, what I should have done is what I just previously previously talked about briefly about sketching in a rough idea where the shadows would be. I mean, this is digital, it's Photoshop. It literally takes no time to make a new layer and add some shadows, you know, and you can play around with it. And what I've done to myself here is I've, I've, I've forced myself into something that, that I didn't think was working. So the problem that I'm having here is, if you look on the right, his hand is way too white, it's too open. Um, his glove is supposed to be like that, so I decided to throw in some shadow and part that to me was a problem was how am I going to make this look okay. Um, I think it turned out okay, um, but uh, now that I'm looking at it as, as I'm going, you can see me doing things like this, where I'm just doing like a quick quick kind of rendering style in there just to give it a little gradient, and then I just ended up rendering it like that. Um, and then what it forced me to do is now I have to go over each finger and give it a light source as well so that it you know pops, it still works. Um, and in this hand here, this actually is is, uh, is terrible. <laughs> Probably shouldn't say it, but um, when I originally did the sketch of this, it, it turned out okay. And then once I did the line art, um, it didn't it didn't really work. And as you can see here, it looks like it's all broken. It's supposed to be a child's hand, and it looks like it's a mix between like a gnarled up hand that's all hamburger, you know, and and, and I don't know. Um, and I don't want to say I just gave up, but deadlines are deadlines. I don't think people are gonna sit on this hand too much. That sounds inappropriate, <laughs> but uh, so we're almost done getting there. We're just because they're rendering the muscles. <clears throat> and here, uh, you can see on the right, you can see it a little bit better. Uh, what I like to do here is I'm just using the poly polygonal lasso. Is it the polygonal? The freeform. The freeform lasso tool. I always get the names mixed up in this program. Um, and I just start doing like triangular shapes. I like those sharp shapes, you know. And I just start stacking them and creating, um, I want to call it chunky shadows. <laughs> um, and here what I'm doing there is I just use the three pixel brush and just kind of carved out uh, the placement for the shadow. Uh, using the lasso tool you can get some really cool shapes and curves in there for shadowing as well. Um, I, I, I'm trying to get more into the habit of using that. And I, I think I broke it up too much in there, so I'm just going to fill it in with black there. And, um, yeah, so I'm just going in there, adding some shadow on the uh, child's hand that's pulling on his, uh, his costume from behind. You know, just give it a little extra, you know, put that shadow underneath the fingers, just so it makes it look a little bit, you know, a little bit more depth there. And here I'm adding a, a rock background. All this is play taking place in a cave. Uh, now, the brush I should say that I used for this one, you can kind of see it looks like an oval or a donut, <clears throat> if you if you can see it at all. Uh, it's ex it's a, essentially the nine pixel brush. Just in the brush settings, all I did was rotate that circle sideways to whichever hand you are. So I'm left-handed, so it's rotated to the right, <clears throat> opposite of the hand that is. What am I talking about? And then uh, I just squished it a little bit, so it makes it look like a little bit of a donut. So you can get a little taper edge to it. But anyway, that's going to wrap this video up. Uh, thanks so much for watching, you guys. I uh, hope you have a great day. Keep reading comics and keep making comics. Take care.